Even before I get into the word, let's just pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this time. Thank you for all of us here and everyone who's joined online. And I just speak and I just pray that let our hearts be open to receive from you. And whatever you speak through me, let it be a blessing to me and to everyone else, Lord Father. Thank you so much, Daddy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we live in interesting times, right? So much happening in the world, across all the nations, and there's nothing coincidence in life. You know, if you are here today morning, it is because Daddy wanted you to be. You're not here by chance. And uh, what I'm going to speak today is about something which is spoken very often, but I am trying to lay some foundations, and uh, we're going to cover a lot of ground today. And we're going to talk about something which is all of us some, sometime look in our life, and that's healing. But before that, let me just start with the question. And the question is that do we believe that we are made in his image? Do we believe that we are made in his image? How many? Yeah, all of us, super. So if you're made his image, we also believe that God is love. And we know who we are and what our identity is in Christ. Are you with me? Yeah, do we believe God is love? Do we know what our identity is? And then, do we also believe that our words have power? How many of us believe that our words have power? Amen. And do we also believe that accepting Jesus gives salvation, and if that is true, with that comes healing as well. Yeah? How many? All of us? Super. Now, let's start, and we're going to cover a lot of topics today, and just to give you an idea what all I am trying to cover today, and there'll be a lot of scriptures I'm using, so if you have your phone, notepad, keep writing down. All the notes are on version app so that you can go back and refer. We're going to talk about how sickness came into picture. We're going to talk about what can be some probable reasons of sickness. We're going to talk about how we can get positioned for health and healing. We're going to talk about some of how Jesus did his ministry. We're going to talk about what are some of the ways we can get healing. And we're also going to talk about few revelations and learnings about healing. So there's a lot, so be attentive. Now let's start with the genesis of sickness. How did sickness came into picture? And if you look at Genesis, and if you read first few chapters, or even for that matter, first few verses, after God created everything, he looked at his creation, and he said, everything is good. That means, till then, there was no sickness on the earth. Right? I believe sickness only came after man fell. Yeah? And if you go on and read a couple of more chapters in Genesis, actually some old people went on to live for almost 900, 700 years. The longest person to live on the face of the earth was Methuselah, and he lived for 969 years. Yeah? And I truly believe if maybe man did not fall, all of us would be, all of them would be living today, and we might have a chance to sit across with Adam on a cup of coffee, because they did not die. Now, that is where sickness came into picture. It took almost 1,000 years for sickness to take hold of mankind. But then, in what all areas can we get sick? And we can get sick in all the three areas of our being which is spirit, soul, and body, yeah? Now, obviously, once we get born again and we accept Jesus Christ, our spirit is made new and that's uncorruptible, so that area gets covered. But even if someone is born again, there is still chance that we can get sick in our soul and in our body. Everyone with me till now? Super. Now, let's look at some of the things which can produce sickness. Some of the things. 
the first one is personal sin and if you look at john chapter 5 verse 14 it says jesus said go and sin no more right so there can be times where personal sin can produce sickness the second reason which can produce sickness is strife now what does strife do strife creates anxiousness and stress and if you go on to google and check there is a study which says the biggest cause of cancer in the world is stress yeah so strife and you can look at james chapter 3 verse 14 and 16 which talk about this another reason which can create sickness is self centeredness and it is mentioned in isaiah chapter 58 verse 3 to 11 one more reason which can create sickness is fear and it is actually one of the biggest killer fear you know a lot of people get sick or even die not because of the sickness but because of the fear which grips them and then what does bible say that we have the spirit of boldness and not of fear yeah so fear is one of the biggest killers another reason where sickness can enter is not regarding our life over extending or taking granted our lives and you know this is one of the most common reason where we take our life for granted we don't realize what wonderful life god has given us and whether it is getting into activities which is not good for health addictions which are not good for health you know and if i have to just make it personal for a long long time i did not focus on my health by god's grace i don't have any sickness in my body but then i kept putting my body taking it granted because i am sure this is not the way god wanted me to be in and it's just been 2 years that i got serious about it and i've started working on it but then not regarding the life because when god made adam what did he do he breathed his own life into us and how many times we disregard this life and that is one of the cause where give our control into enemy's hands and he can enter us another reason which can produce sickness is trauma and it is in mentioned in acts chapter 14 verse 19 and another reason for sickness can be grief sometimes because of loss of a loved one or you know any other kind of grief it grips you it puts you in depression and then we again see sickness coming into our body and there is one reason which i have not written here but there are many times which it is a direct attack from the enemy on your body or on your mind and all these can happen in the body and all these can also happen in our mind so these are some of the reasons of what can produce sickness in our life now moving on let's talk about how we can get positioned for health and healing and the first thing is if you look at proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 it says for as he in his heart so as he thinketh is in art so is he what do we think in our heart and that is what we will be it's extremely important that we keep renewing our heart and mind to god's word and to what he wants because when you look at the world and everything which is happening there's so much of garbage which goes in there's so much of worldliness which goes in and that will make you positioned for not health and healing but for sickness and the other extremely important thing which we need to realize is we are not sick who are trying to get healed we are actually healed who are trying to resist the sickness listen to it carefully we are not sick who is trying to get healed we are actually healed who are trying to resist the sickness what happened 2000 years back on that cross bible says through his stripes we were healed it is in past tense it doesn't say you will get healed 
it doesn't say you are being healed it says you were healed so we need to fight from a place of victory that we are already healed and then we are resisting the sickness and the bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you but what does the world say the world say no you are programmed to die you are programmed to death and you are programmed to sickness and then so much garbage comes in now i'm not saying that you know we should not take medicines or we should not go to doctors they are a blessing but at the same time is there a way where we can walk in supernatural health is there a way where we can walk in divine health and then if you look at proverbs 17:22 it says a merry heart does good like a medicine but a broken spirit dries the bone your heart will determine your destiny how is the position of your heart you know just simply sometimes being grumpy in the morning can affect your health you know i actually did a small experiment on myself i spent almost 3 three, three and a half hours traveling every day and generally i'm listening to a book or worship songs but then i said okay let's see what does what effect does this have and one day i just put some songs you know high high music high level songs and it did change my driving because what i was listening <laughs> started affecting me because whatever i listened had something going in my heart so your heart will decide your destiny and one more thing is no double mindedness you know trusting your father when he says that through my stripes you were healed 2000 years back it is done it is a done deal it doesn't comes with ifs and buts will i heal will i get healed or will i not get healed that is a stumbling block so no double mindedness absolutely and then there are you know like today morning when the last song was going on and even during the worship what happens when you come on sunday to the church it builds atmosphere right it creates atmosphere where your faith rise up and similarly when it comes to healing we need to have right attitude you know and what are those few attitudes in life and you know how god works if you look at from the first song then what pastor rufus said during offering then what pastor shawn said during communion and even the last song it covers all these words which i'm going to speak now gratefulness love praise giving positive outlook faith righteousness conscious and peace these are some of the attitudes which we need to have when we are getting positioned for health and healing right everyone with me till now so far super the second thing the third thing we are going to talk about is something extremely 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 important and before i speak i want all all of you to see this picture and take a minute to actually soak this picture you know what are these these are water crystals there is a scientist called imaru mitoro or someone from japan and he's been doing a lot of work on what effect our words have on water crystals and if you see these set of four pictures the first one the water of water is drainage basin before and after the prayer the tap water from primary school before and after the prayer the tap water from hiroshima peace memorial park before and after the prayer the water of lake baiwa before and after the prayer these are water crystals showing effect of prayer on water you know basically this is a amplified version of water crystals from a bottle like this what we speak is changing the shape of water crystals look at the crystals before and after the change and how important 
is what we speak. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the power of words. You can go on later and look at Google. The person's name is Masaru Imoto, and who's been doing a lot of this work on what our words can do. Yeah, so words have power. Now, just to put things in perspective, do you know our bodies are made up of 70% water? Yes? And what are words? Words are vibrations. In scientific terms, sound waves, right? And then look at Genesis. God created everything by speaking. He did, not, he did not do a magic. He just said, let there be light. He said, let earth bring forth. He spoke. He just simply spoke. And then Bible says in Proverbs 18.21, the death and life are in the power of your tongue. And now put those pictures into perspective and think everything what we utter full day from morning to evening, and our bodies are 70% water, how that must be affecting our own being because there's so much water inside of us, yeah? Around three months back, I was talking to someone, and for the first time I heard this phrase, I was under the weather. I'm very frank, I did not even know what that mean. What is being under the weather? I actually went on Google and I found out, okay, if you're not well, you say I was under the weather. And how many times do we speak? Oh, there is viral, I'll get viral. Oh, there is dengue going on. Oh, there is weather is changing. No, let that all happen. Not for us. Yeah, no, no weather change, no viral, no dengue, no malaria, nothing has effect on us if you truly believe that your words have power. And take one minute and just realize, there are many times we get sick, not because sickness entered, because we start thinking, I'm about to get sick. Oh, I will get fever today. You will get, because your words have power. When God breathed his own power in Adam, he gave the same power to us. Our words are life and death. It is important that we, we are very careful of what we are speaking. You know, just, just to give another small story and how I saw this working in my own life is rewind four years, 2020, and it was a time of COVID. Somehow, that time it just got quickened in my and my wife's heart that no matter what, COVID cannot enter us. And no matter what. And there have been times where both of us have been in ICU filled with COVID patients to pray for them. There have been times where I've been in my office talking to my staff who are badly, uh, you know, grappling with COVID. My own father died because of COVID and I hugged him when I was dropping him to the hospital. And then I traveled the most extensively during that time because of my work. I was traveling at least three weeks in a month during the first wave and the second wave. But I just knew, and I used to speak, if, if COVID enters me, he will die. And my friends used to laugh at me, hey, kuch bhi bolte tum. But then, true story, not once, not once me or my wife got COVID, not once. But the only thing I had to undergo is I don't know how many times I had to get the RT-PCR test done to enter the airport. That was painful. And then came the time of taking the vaccines. Again, both of us did not have peace to take this COVID vaccine. People said it is going to be new normal. You are not going to be allowed to travel. You're going to be, you know, if you don't take vaccine, they're not going to listen to you. But when God quickens something in your heart, it doesn't matter. So we did not take any vaccine. Today, there is no restrictions, right? But then that was the power of the words we spoke that even if COVID enters me, it will die. Nothing will happen to me. So our words have power. And we need to watch what kind of sound waves we are creating every single day. As simple as that, when you're sitting with your friends or you're out at work, 
even if there's a little slang you use, it is doing changing in the crystals of your body. So be careful. Yeah? And there are a few verses which you can go back and refer on this. Is James 3, 5, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22 to 24, James 3, verse 13 to 16, Matthew 12, verse 32 to 35, and Mark 11, 26. And then you can also look at a few more verses where it talks about that God's word is life and health. And that is mentioned in Psalms 107, 15 to 20, Matthew 8, 8 to 16, Proverbs 3, 1 to 2, Jeremiah 15, 16, Jeremiah 23, 29, 29, and Psalms 103, 1, 5. I know a lot of verses, but they will help you stand when you want to stand on something. So go back, download these verses, write down, and keep reading them because verses are alive, his word is alive. And very interestingly, let's also look at how did Jesus use his words? Yeah? Because he was the greatest minister, right? How did he use his words? And he said in John 6, 63, he said, my words are spirit and life. What did he say? My words are spirit and life. And then if you look at some of the things he did in his ministry, what did he do when he stilled the storm? Did he do some magic? Did he call an army? He just called the storm and said, be still. Yeah? He just spoke again because he knew the power of his own words. What did he do when he raised Lazarus from the dead? He just said once, Lazarus, come out. He did not have to say that 100 times. There are many times where we also have this understanding that only maybe if I pray 100 times, God is going to listen to me. Wrong understanding. If you truly understand what power you have, you just need to speak once. What did he do when he healed the sick and cast out demons? Matthew 8, 16. He just again spoke. Yeah? What did he do when he forgave sins and healed? Again, he just spoke. So on and on when you see from creation to what Jesus did and to what all the great ministers did, they always spoke because all of them understood the power of their own words. And to all this, you know, what is more important is faith. And having faith is extremely important. And faith in the Father, faith in his word, faith in his power, faith in his character, and faith in his love. We need to have that faith. Now, a lot of times people think, oh, I don't have faith like you. No, I don't have one kilo or you have 100 kgs. It doesn't work like that. The Bible says even if you have faith like a mustard seed, that is enough. But maybe a few things which we don't understand is how do you get faith built up? Again, Bible is so good that it has answers to all your questions. It says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. What are you feeding your mind your ears and your body with Netflix or Bible, movies or his words, worship or any other music. Because all of that, like I said, when I did that experiment on me, when I, I put some music which was not usual to me, it changed my driving on the road because it started affecting me. So faith will come by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Now, let's talk about how we can get healed. Obviously, we will only get healed by him, by his power, and through him. But there are maybe some different ways of getting this healing. And the first one is the natural process. Now, what do I mean? You know, our bodies are so beautifully made that they are self-healing every single minute even when we don't know. For example, if you get a small cut, it heals itself, right? 
And the reason we should be so ready to believe in supernatural healing, because that is how every body is made. Your body is healing itself every single second. So that is natural process. And at some times when body is not able to heal itself, obviously we need to go and seek medical help. Yeah, because there are some times when it is beyond what body can heal itself. But that's the natural process. The second way we can get healing is by the word. And it says in Proverbs chapter 4, 20 to, 20, 20 to 22, that, you know, word is alive. Bible is alive. I don't know how many of you know, know the story of Kenneth Hagin and how he got healed. He was on his deathbed, about to die. He got hold of his grandmother's Bible, started reading, and he just got up and went to the kitchen and his family like, what are you doing? You're about to die. But it was just the word healed him then and there. So you can get healed through by the word. Another way you can get healed is by a miracle. You know, by someone praying over you or just by experiencing a miracle, you can get that healing. Then you can also get healed by the gift of healing. You know, someone has a gift of healing and he prays with you and you can get healed. The other way you can get healed is also by agreeing in prayer with someone who is trying to get healed. Just agree, speak life, and just speak, uh, resist the sickness, and it will allow you to get healed. And the last and the most important, we all get healed by the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross. What happened on the cross? Jesus destroyed the power of sin and redeemed man from its curse in spirit, soul, and body. And how did Jesus heal people? Again, he just spoke. Whether it was raising the dead, whether it was healing the sick, whether it was opening the blind eye, he just spoke. You know, sometimes there is, maybe we feel that fear, uh, sorry, fever is a small disease and maybe cancer is a big one. No, for God, whatever it is, is the same. It's just one prayer can heal you from fear. At the same time, just one prayer can heal you from cancer. So no sickness is big or small. For him, it is all same. The only thing which can hinder your healing is the unbelief in the heart. And what I spoke in the beginning, no double-mindedness. Even if there is a little unbelief which says, oh, this might work on someone else, but not on you. It'll put a stop to your healing. Again, how to fight that unbelief is by building faith. And how do you build faith? Is by hearing the word of God. And the last one which I want to cover is seven revelations or learnings on healing. And I just want to read these few verses from Luke chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. And he say, it says... He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured and the people all tried to touch him because the power was coming from him and healing them all. And you know, the seven learnings of Revelation, the first one, God cannot deny himself. He is life. John 10.10. 10. And if he is life, there is no way he can put you in sickness because sickness and life are opposite to each other. So God will never deny himself. An intimate communion with God will heal you. The second revelation, a word, the word is spirit, life, and medicine. John 6.63, an intimate communion with the word will heal you. The way it happened with Kenneth Hagin. He just started reading the Bible and he got healed. The third revelation, the power of sin was destroyed and you are forgiven. That understanding that on the cross, the power of sin was destroyed and it does not have any control over you 
over you today will will heal you a conscious free of sin and guilt will heal you fourth one sickness represents the work of enemy 1 john 3:8 and again a revelation of jesus's victory over the devil will heal you because devil come and tell you no no you did this and because this you're going going through this no jesus provided the victory long back the fifth one god is love we all agree god is love 1 john 4 8 and 18 a revelation of god's love will heal you sickness is a source of fear but what does the bible say perfect love casts out all fear and fear is one of the biggest killers even today the moment it comes and it says no something is happening and you won't have to go and see a doctor you're already so fearful it starts affecting your body it start affecting it starts having those chemical reactions that even if you don't have something fear will make sure by the time you reach doctor you've developed something so a revelation of his goodness will heal you and if jesus healed everyone he is willing to heal you today also and the last one jesus took your sickness on the cross it says in isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 5 through his stripes again we were healed a revelation of jesus is the only healer will heal you before we close the service with blessings i don't know what and how you walked in today i know many of you may be fighting some sickness in your mind or in your body and we are going to pray for you here after the service come uh, come forward we have the prayer team available we will pray for you and and i truly believe that you're going to walk out today absolutely healed in whatever area you need healing amen and the choice today is with us to walk in divine health the authority is ours jesus said heal the sick cast out demons raise the dead and cleanse the leper and that's the authority we have today you know we don't have to tell god that god you come and heal because god said i have already given you the authority as simple as that in your house when you go and switch on the bulb do you call the electricity department and say can you switch on the bulb they'll say you are foolish because the electricity is in your house similarly god says you heal the sick you cast out demons you raise the dead and you cleanse the lepers so we need to operate in that authority to walk in divine health is a choice you have today